Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday and welcome back to AC Today Reports. I'm your host, Latasha Hewitt, and we're so happy that you chose to join us. We're looking forward to tonight's program. We are bringing back our Meet the Author segment. A great author, great book. Make sure you stay tuned for that. We also have Pastor Dyson back answering one of your questions. Uh, don't forget, if you have one, email me, lhewitt at acsda.com. And of course, it's Women's History Month, and we're continuing to find ways to talk about women's health, but it's something that all can appreciate. So we hope you'll stay tuned for all of that coming up after the break. We'll be right back. Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to AC Today Reports. Uh, we're bringing back another segment we haven't had in a while, and it's called Meet the Author. And we're very happy today to have a special author with us. It is Women's History Month. So we're celebrating all of our female authors and women who are making an influence. And so we're very happy to bring on this author here, Elena Grant. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to AC Today Reports. We were happy to have you here. And we were first introduced to Elena through her cousin, who is a part of Allegheny East, uh, goes to our Liberty Church, Ray Crawford. And he said, my cousin has this awesome book. You have to talk to her and share it um, with the AC viewers. And so here we are. But first of all, how are you doing? How's the pandemic treating you? I'm doing wonderful. Um, as an educator, you know, we've really been trying to adjust and readjust in this oh. pandemic. But, you know, we're making it every day you know we're praying we're asking god for his favor for his guidance because it's very different and mm -hmm. i know the kids are kind of they're, they're over it at this point. Certain. so as an educator are you all virtual because you know you're in atlanta right you're you're in atlanta area. Mm -hmm. are you all going into in-person school or how is it down there so just recently, last week, um, we had kids start coming in. So the majority of my students um, are still virtual, but I have now about seven kids who come into class and we still do a virtual um, oh, lesson. Okay, gotcha. Virtual. They're sitting at their, they're just sitting at their desk on their tablet or their, um, their Chromebook and they're, you know, engaging into lessons like that. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. I was just curious how others are doing it right now. Okay, so because of your education background, I'm sure that was an inspiration somehow for your book. And uh, go ahead and tell us the, the name of the book that you authored. So the name of my book is A New First Day, and I'll show you here. I know A New First Day. Um, and this book was written um, for my students and mine. I'm, I know last year, March, is when we were dismissed and we had to go virtual. So um, during that time, I really thought about my students and you know how they were feeling and how it would look like when we started going back to school. Mm -hmm. So this story talks about Cindy. She's an African-American girl, and I have to represent my people, my culture. Yeah. <laughs> and Cindy is going her first day back to school um, after COVID or during COVID. And she's so confused. She's like, oh my goodness, everyone's wearing masks. Everyone's six feet apart. Mm -hmm. All the guideline, guidelines are implemented. And she's just really nervous. And as the day progresses, she has like this nervous breakdown. She starts crying. She's like, I hate this Corona bike. I hate, I hate this mask. And her friends kind of chime in and they agree with her. But then she wonders, how's, you know, how's lunch gonna be? How is Reese's going to be? And she goes through each moment in her school day and she realizes, you know what? I can make it. I can go through this day with all these new adjustments and I can be able to come out and have a good and a new first day. So oh, that is kind of the premise of the book. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's really meant to give children a sense of ease and calm as they're about to enter, you know, and because some of like, for instance, my children have not gone back to in-person school yet. So this is something that they're going to be anticipating maybe in, in the next school year. Mm -hmm. um, and those are definitely questions I can see them asking if they haven't asked them already. And so this is a good book that they can read 
to kind of prepare them and at the same time give them the confidence that it can happen. It can work. It's different. It's not what you're used to, mm -hmm. but it's not so bad after all. That's that's awesome. Now, exactly. how many how many pages is, is the book? It's um, it's forty eight pages. Oh, um, okay. and the back of the book also has discussion questions. So after you've read the book, you can kind of go through it with you know your your child, your students, your clients if you're a counselor, and just talk about how COVID nineteen has affected them. Yeah, I love that. So it's it's a that's a, that's a resource tool I, for those who are struggling, maybe who are actually going back already. This is something that might give them ease. I know some schools are transitioning even right now, the, the, just the month of March. Mm -hmm. They've just started to go back and some children are having those challenges. So this is a perfect time yeah. um, to release something like this. And so for those who are interested, those who have children and kind of want to prepare them or assist them even now as they're going back, how can they get the book? So you can purchase the book on Amazon. I know everyone loves Amazon, so it's there, um, Amazon Prime. Um, you can also purchase it on Target um, online as well as Barnes and Nobles and from Book Baby. So those are the um, several places that you can purchase the book if you would like. Okay, awesome. Nice hardcover, 48 pages. You got great reviews. Uh, yes. I, didn't check, I didn't check that before I shared, so good thing <laughs> you got great reviews, so that's good. So what what is some of the feedback? What kind of feedback have you gotten from those who have read the book or, or shared it with their, their young person? Well, for, fortunately, um, I've had really positive feedback. Um, I know a lot of the parents have come to me and they said, you know, Mrs. Grant, you know, my child, they just love reading that book. It reminds them of what they're really going through right now. So it's very relevant. Um, and it's, it's, it's inspirational too. I know I had uh, my friend, she saw Susie on the book. And she was like, oh, mommy, that's me. And oh, she was wow. about, you know, her being African-American. I thought that was so beautiful because it's always about representing who you are and um, your culture. So I think it's so important that we represent our culture and our identity, whether it's a book, a song, in any facet. Yes, absolutely. That is so important. Um, I know for our family, that's very important when we go to pick out books for our daughters. We have two daughters. Mm -hmm. Um, my husband's always encouraging, find books um, that have covers for people that look like you, you know, yes. to encourage them because, you know, when we were growing up, mm -hmm. we know that, that those were few and far between. We, we didn't even look for them because we didn't, we knew we wouldn't find them. So it's great to start to see more of our African-American authors um, having representation and giving young girls this opportunity to, to run up to a book where they see someone Mm -hmm. That looks like them and it makes it more relatable for so many of them. So we applaud you on multiple levels for this book. <laughs> Thank um, you. Representation, even the um the emotional and mental health that this um provides and facilitates mm -hmm. for young people who have anxiety about going back. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is awesome. I hope that everyone's viewing. If you have a child, you know a child, if you have children of your own who might benefit from this book, go ahead and check it out. And you said, once again, tell us where we can get it. Amazon, Target, Barnes and Nobles. Mm -hmm. And Book Baby. Mm -hmm. And Book Baby. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. This is this is great. Uh, do you have any plans to author any more books in, in the future? So I do. So the goal is to create a series, A New First Day. Um, mm -hmm. So the next book would be about a child who's dealing with ADHD and they just got newly diagnosed and how is that new day looking? You know, whether they have medication or they go the natural route, like how is that going to look when you're talking about a school day? Ooh, that's really good. Yes. Uh, my husband's a therapist specifically for children. So I'm already saying, wow, this would be, a, that would be a good resource yes, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, for those who are in that field. All right. That's awesome. I, I love it when educators, you're there, you see the needs mm -hmm. um, and then you take it upon yourself to meet them because no one can pretty much understand it uh, from your point of view like you can. So, you mm -hmm. you know, that's a special, special perspective that you get from the, from these books. So this is awesome. Well, I, I thank you for taking the time to talk to us about the book. I think it's great. I'm going to look into it for our girls so that so they can read it. Um, is there an age level? I forgot to ask that. Is it for um, it's more so for ages six to eight years old. Okay. But, you know, if you are older than that, you're welcome to read it as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Well, thank you so much, Elena. We, we appreciate that. And we wish you much success. Please let us know when the rest of the series gets going. I, I surely will. Will thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. No problem. Take care. All right, you too. All right, everyone. We'll be right back after this break. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe, and who knows? Maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. All right, everyone, we're back with the AC Today Reports. And now we're moving right into our Ask the Pastor segment. And as you may recall, we have Pastor Dyson, Michael Dyson, with us this month, who's answering all the questions um, that you have out there. So we're going to go ahead and invite him to join us at this time. How are you, Pastor Dyson? Hey, Latasha. How are you today? Great. We didn't scare you. You're back for third week. That's a good thing. It's be hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, as always, we like to thank you for, for being brave enough to tackle some of these questions that we have coming in. And uh, the question for today, I'd like to say that I'd like to think it's easier than the last two questions you've had this month. Okay. Um, this one is, it's pretty relevant, I'm sure, especially now. How can, or how do I witness to my coworkers? Of course, we know that we see these people for a lot of us, the majority of our, our day. And sometimes they're not situations where you feel like you can just talk about God or how do you, you see people in need and you want to give them the answer of Jesus, but you're not really sure how to do it. Can you give us some tips or some guidance and how we can do that? Uh, yes, I can. The first thing I want to say is how not to do it. Mm. How not to do it. The first we thing, you need to know your workplace. Uh, you can get uh, not only uh, your employee in trouble or your coworker in trouble, but you can get in trouble uh, if you are in their uh Probably, uh, I don't know that word is always harder, proselytizing and trying to uh, become the office preacher. Mm. Um, the number one way to, um, to witness uh, to coworkers is by your lifestyle, by your actions. And I'm talking about your consistency. Uh, people watch what you say on Monday <laughs> and then they, and then they, then they see how you act on Thursday by the water cooler. They, 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 they're watching you when you don't think they're watching you. Uh, you also have heard it's, it's not what you say. It's what you do. It's what you do. Uh, so that's the probably the the best thing because you can be most dynamic in sharing the word. There are some people who have the Christian language down to a T, and uh, you know God is good all the time. And all the time, God is. Good. And their actions don't mirror that at all, mm -hmm. especially when crises come. That's how you can tell the difference. Uh, uh, you know, as long as things are going uh, well, uh, we want to see how you act when your direct deposit doesn't show up. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how you print your When they messed it up. Mm -hmm. right. mess up for the third time. Uh, so your actions is probably number one. But uh, uh, something happens when you have been consistent in your faith, mm -hmm. uh, God will bring people your way. That's I've right. experienced it. And, and people will come to you to get a prayer through. When they're really going through something, uh, they will bypass others uh, that are in the office that are known as, as maybe preachers or known as spiritual counselors. And they're going to come to that one who they, they sense. The Holy Spirit somehow has directed them to you. And you will have an opportunity at that moment uh, if you will allow, the spirit says he will tell you what to say. That's true. Uh, but the number one thing that you need to learn, and, and we're trying to do this, we've been on our, our, our prayer line for uh, just about a year now since the pandemic began. And we've taken our prayer line 12 noon every day. We've taken it uh, to that. Certainly we're praying, but we were taking it to try to help people grow in how to be empathic listeners, how to learn to be present for somebody. These are things chaplains mm -hmm. know. Uh, mm -hmm. that you can just be present and not say anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something people don't need your aunt. They know what they need to do. <laughs> they just want to hear you. They want a sounding board, someone they can just. 
Absolutely. Talk it out with, yeah. Absolutely. Don't don't come in and you know run to the car and get your Bible and come back and hit them with you know sixty six different bullets of scripture. You uh, listening, uh, befriending them. Uh, the worst thing, God did not ask for any, you know, we have some fanatical people uh, in the Christian faith, not just in our own denomination, that do damage mm. to us. And you, uh, many people are going around and you're, you're, you're trying to fix up what others that have come before you have done in this heart. Yeah. Uh, God yeah. just wants you to be, tell your story mm. when asked. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and they will ask, like you said, they tend to see something in you. That Absolutely. makes them curious, something that's appealing. And that's how the Holy Spirit works. And and Absolutely. that's what and if that's not happening, I always say if that's not happening, that means we probably need to look mm. at our relationship mm. with God. How come we're right. not attracting people? You um, are hitting the nail on the head. Uh, that right there. If people don't want anything to do, they can't come. They no, they don't even invite you to the prayer, uh <laughs> to the prayer group. Uh that might be a clue. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, because they know the ones that are gossiping. They know the ones that uh, you know, have a surface relationship. Uh, uh, I, you've experienced it. I experienced it in the military, Latasha. Uh, you got all the, I was not a chaplain in, in the military. Um, and it would blow my mind uh, that uh, you know, big events, we had big events where we had people there that were, that were, that was their job to come and minister for, you know, the invocation or the benediction. And I had the, the pleasure of working for two or three star generals or admirals. And when we would have an event, they would say, uh, 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 Master Sergeant Dyson or Gunny Dyson, we want you to do that. And I, you know, my question was, hey, you got the chaplain there. This yeah, why are you asking me? Or colonel. And, and the Lord showed me that if you will uh, just live the life, mm -hmm. uh, people and more importantly, your family will come because they know you more than anybody else. Uh, your family will allow you to be able to win. So start there with your behavior. And uh, uh, that's the thing where you have to ask the Lord to, to empty me of me and fill me with you through the day because it's not easy to have that consistent. Because I, you know, you have a day and it, it ain't. Mm -hmm. just, and we are human. We have those moments. Absolutely. But, but even in those moments, even in those moments, like say you don't get your paycheck. I mean, I think that's a cause for you to be a little upset. But how do you handle it? Do you Absolutely. cuss out the person or do you express your frustration in a way that's constructive? And they say, wow, you know, wow, that's impressive. And, you know, that makes us attractive because it's, we don't handle things as normal people do. And, and they start to ask you, how come you didn't just go off on, on so-and-so? And then that can be your way in to answer, um, you know, more. And that's the thing. They come to you with questions Outside, they come to you during the lunch break or they want to exchange numbers with you to talk outside of that work environment. Because I like what you said about you have to be, consider where you are. You don't want to get that person in trouble or yourself in trouble or your employer in trouble by, you know, witnessing uh, on yeah. the job too overtly. So, mm -hmm. but also be ready. Uh, we, I can take you to just about every Adventist church and probably some that ain't Adventist. <laughs> Somewhere in that church, there's a stack of amazing facts, lessons in a, in a file cabinet. <laughs> uh, you, you, got, you got steps to Christ in that room in the back. You got all this <sighs> I can any church. I guarantee you we can find them. <laughs> Those should be in the hands of members and that should be in your car. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I sometimes I have stuff in my car. My son cleaned out my car the other day and brought in a stack of, uh, 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 I got some here. He brought in a stack and said, Dad, you know, I have them because if, I, <laughs> you know, you, you, you might be encounter people. You want to, yeah. But that's how you witness. And uh, unassumingly, the Holy Spirit will bring that person to you gotcha. at just the right time. And we have to be ready. Um, we, we have to be ready. You're right. Our lives, the way we live is one of the biggest witnessing tools that we'll ever have. And so that's why we got to work on making sure we're right with him yeah. Yeah. so that he can use us to draw people when he's ready to send them, send them our way. Awesome. Thank you. All All right. Um, the, the, brought out a lot of things for us to consider there. Um, but the key is to be a witness. <laughs> Be a witness. Please don't let that opportunity slip. Friendship, prayer, service, your testimony, invitation, conversation. Just have a regular conversation. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm talking about the game last night, and all you want to give me is, you know, psalms such as a, I, right? That's not the moment for that. No, right. You know, people just want to just have, yeah. The ministry of friendship. I, you know, there we you have go. to make that. Yeah, that's so true. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Once again, we appreciate you. A little it, easier. Right? Yeah, yeah. This one's a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, we like this. Um, and so we thank you for sharing once again. And uh, unfortunately, next week is our last week with you. But, um, you know, we've enjoyed <laughs> <laughs> you try. You ready to put someone else in that hot seat, right? That's right. <laughs> we, we've enjoyed the dialogue. Thank you. All right. Thanks again, and we'll see you again next week. All right. God bless. See you, Latasha. All right, everyone. We'll be right back after this break. Isaiah fifty-eight verse eight. He says, "Hey, if you guys actually do what I'm saying, if you take care of others, if you feed the hungry, care for other people in need." This is what's going to happen. Verse eight family of Isaiah 58. It says, then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Let me show you guys a breakdown right here. Your light shall break forth as the morning. Your health will improve. Righteousness will go before thee and your reward will be the glory of God. Hold up. Who doesn't want these things? And God is saying, listen, these are the rewards I have for you. All you have to do is follow my instructions. Care for those in need. Take care of the poor. Feed those that are hungry. And again, your light will break forth as the morning. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to AC Today Reports. We are at the last point of our program, our favorite segment, one of our favorites, Fitness with Faye. We always are happy to learn something that we can do to le live a healthier lifestyle. And Faye is always, always more than willing to share that with us. So how are you doing today, Faye? Wonderful, Latasha. It's great to be back with you and the viewers as always. Yes. How have you been adjusting with the time change? You know, it wasn't as bad as I thought this time around. Um, I mean, of course, I felt a little sleepier um, waking up. I, I like to wake up to bright daylight. Um, so I'm adjusting to that. But it wasn't as bad as I was, I was preparing myself for. <laughs> How about you? Oh, pretty good. I'm adjusting. <laughs> Okay, yeah, exactly. just, just slightly a little bit sleepy, but you know, I'm adjusting. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it takes a couple days to get acclimated. It does. Mm -hmm. But it is nice to have the uh the days stay brighter longer in the yeah. evening. We're able yeah. to get more sunlight as the spring is coming. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And hopefully many of us will take advantage of that after the work hopefully. day. You go outside and walk and yes, some get some fresh activity. air, sunshine. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's some good news you have for us today? Okay. What I have for you today as a continuation on our Women's History Month and right. healthy body awareness and self-care and so on and so forth. As we look into springing forward mm -hmm. in 2021 with new accomplishments, let's make this a year a great achievement. Let us continue to highlight women's self-care rest and peace of mind. Oh, yes. Many of us women just make it through the day, Latasha. <laughs> yeah, I'm a witness. <laughs> you know, there are days we have to push ourselves to get out of bed, take a shower, dress up, and show up, mm -hmm. even after a crying fit, after we poured our heart out to God. Have you ever had those days? Yes, I'm a witness. <laughs> okay. I've had those days. One can only pray that our smile is warm and that our eyes are not red and bloodshot and that the Holy Spirit still uses us in our weakness. Can anyone out there identify with that? I'm sure you're hearing some amens out there in virtual. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It appears that many of the women that we see doing great things, Latasha, still struggle, struggle with issues such as fears, doubts, unwarranted criticism, lack of support, and the like. What sets them apart, though, is that they push forward strongly. They push, move with intention, and they push with conviction, knowing that they are meant to do amazing things. Mm -hmm. The image that we have 
of ourselves is important, ladies. Is. The Bible says, by beholding, we become. We need a godly, positive self image. This is the foundation of our self care. Undoubtedly, we're faced with many big challenges, but by overcoming them with faith in God and self confidence, we will have many great successes. That's right. I'm going to continue with the DEAR principle, as I mentioned before, which okay. stands for diet, exercise, air, and rest. All right, DEAR. I love that DEAR. Now, you talk about rest and, you know, you talk about that's sometimes hard for women based on all of the responsibilities we have in the house and taking care of home and all. How do we even find time to rest? How do we relax? Okay, well, Latasha, I'm going to take you and the viewers through, guide you through a wonderful, relaxing breathing exercise. Oh, okay. That's a treat. All right. Okay. Well, that would be a wonderful way to end the evening. And this is something that you can do daily at home with your families, with your spouses, or by yourself. Okay, let's do it. Right. What do we have to do? Okay, give yourself a little room. If you okay. choose, you may want to fold your leg in place. Go your legs. Okay, we're just going to sit up, straighten your spine, and just relax. Allow your shoulders to just float down away from your ears. Listen to the sound of my voice. And let's take a breath in through your nostrils. Inhale. Lift your shoulders up towards your ears and exhale. Inhale, shoulders up. Exhale, shoulders down. Let's breathe into your belly. Inhale. Exhale. Again, inhale. Now exhale. Now you're going to take a breath in through your nostrils. And I want you to take it in. We're going to count to five. And then we're going to out. Exhale to eight. Listen to my two. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Hold. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll stop at six. Once again, inhale, two, three, four, hold. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Beautiful. By breathing in sufficient oxygen, it really helps us to relax. Mm -hmm. oxygenating our body properly. Oftentimes we're not breathing properly and we're not taking in sufficient oxygen, sufficient mm -hmm. air. As it's getting warmer now, you can get outside and get some fresh air, breathe. One of our dear principles is air, air and breathing. Okay, let's continue with our exercise. And this time you may close your eyes, take a quick glance at me, to view what I'm doing and then close your eyes and just relax. This is supposed to be relaxing. Okay, I want you to lower your right ear to your right shoulder and you're gonna feel wonderful stretching in the left side of your neck, all mm -hmm. the way down from your earlobe down the side of your neck. Now, while we're here, your right ear to your right shoulder, extend your left hand, let's just press down with that hand. Press down. And then circle around to the right and then to the left. Make sure you're keeping the ear towards the shoulder so that you're feeling the stretching taking mm -hmm. place. Wonderful. Let's gently bring the head back up. And we're going to lower the left ear to the left shoulder as far as you can. Extend that right hand out. Circle your hand forward. And now reverse. Press down with that right hand, pat down. Can you feel that stretching, viewers? Can you I feel can. it, Latasha? I can. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Let's bring your head up. Now, tuck your chin to your chest. Lower your chin to your chest. Thereby, we're stretching the top of our spine, back of your neck. Mm -hmm. We hold a lot of tension and stress in our shoulders, in our neck. This is a wonderful exercise segment to help you relax daily. Let's pull the chin down towards the chest a little deeper, a little further. 
Now slide your chin over to your left shoulder, back to center, right shoulder, now back to center. Lift your head up. Let's take a breath in. Exhale, turn your face to the left as far as you can. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhale, center. Beautiful. Now, let's take a breath in, lifting the shoulders up towards the ears again. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe into your belly. Inhale. Exhale. Beautiful. Now, let's take our arms out to the side. Inhale. As we lift our arms up towards the sky, bring your hands together in prayer form. Turn your gaze up, and we're going to move our hands down. Lace your fingers together under your chin. Okay? And I'm going to take you through my angel breathing that I do in my classes. Let's inhale. Tilt your head back and spread your arms, spread your wings. Now exhale. Okay, exhale. There we go. Inhale. Tilt your head back on the inhale. Exhale. Close your arms. Bring your arms down. Two more times. Inhale. Now exhale. One more time, inhale. Now exhale. Wonderful. Okay, let's release our hands. Just shake your hands out, shake your wrists around. Are you feeling a little more relaxed there, Natasha? I feel like I could take a nap right now. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. It's working. Yeah. Okay, great. Now I want you to shake your head no, Latasha. No more excuses. And yes, up and down. I'm going to take better care of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make self-care a part of my health care. No more excuses. No more excuses. Yes. yes. I'm going to do more. I'm going to be more. I'm going to do better. Okay. I love that. Wow. Oh, wonderful. I felt so good. Like, good. I could see good. myself doing that in between meetings <laughs> you know yeah. like when you need a little relaxed it's a transition from whatever you were just discussing or at the end of the day before you start to engage with the rest of your family and oh, absolutely great i love that yes yeah thank you for that that was awesome You're really welcome and it's easy to do i mean everything was very easy to do right from your seat so you, we can find ways to relax no matter where we are as long as you know we're seated <laughs> exactly right and for those of you sitting at home working from home and you're in and out of zoom meetings on the computer all day i want to encourage you actually i'm going to emphasize that you get up every hour every half an hour stand up and take a walk through your house mm. stand up for at least 10 to 15 minutes before sitting back down every hour Take mm -hmm. a 10 to 15 minute stand, stretch, and walk. You can reach your arms up over your head, pick your feet up and down and march, but just make sure you're getting up every hour. That's so important. To take a walk, yes, if not going outside to get some fresh air. And in conclusion, can any one of you add a single year to your life by worrying? Not at all. No. <laughs> Quite the so opposite. So let's learn to relax. Latasha and viewers, and trust God. Amen. Ladies, once again, let us renew our strength and let's move towards becoming healthier spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Amen. Amen. And what does your shirt say, by the way? That's also okay. Let's see. Can Amen. you see? Yep, be strong and, and courageous. Joshua yes, one and nine. One nine. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. I love it. I Thank love you, it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this has been great. I'm so relaxed now. I, I'm, oh, I guess I'm, I'm, glad. I'm glad we did this at the end of the show. I might not have any um <laughs> <laughs> but thank you as always for sharing. And I just definitely to emphasize that I will revisit often. That okay, wonderful. So good. Instantly, instantly it felt better. You know, I felt better. Oh, so this God. is great. 
I'm glad. Well, I'm happy. <laughs> we're going to have a relaxation stretch and uh, relaxation stretch and flex video coming out soon. So All stay right. tuned, viewers. Well, that Fair was a tease. Okay, yeah. awesome. Perfect. That would be great. Yeah, that would be great. And we'll probably need it around that tax time. You know, April might need. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, but thank you, thank you so much, Faye. We always appreciate. Um, the tips that you share. And today we appreciate that relaxation exercise. We look forward to more coming up next month. Thank you so much. We You're very it. welcome. To God be the glory. Amen. Yeah. And may God bless you, Latasha, and all that you do. We're so appreciative of you. You're a phenomenal, phenomenal woman. Oh, thank, thank you, Faye. I'm thankful for this opportunity to uh, and be interviewed by you and share these wonderful, helpful tips to the viewers out there. Amen. We're, we're both blessed by this opportunity. So thank you so much. It doesn't yeah. fall on deaf ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, everyone, we'll be right back after this break. up tonight's episode we're happy that you stayed tuned we are still celebrating women's history month so if you have a woman that you think deserves to be celebrated don't forget to email me l hewitt at aecsda.com so we can interview her next week please please we look forward to hearing from you there's so many wonderful things happening and we want to take this time to celebrate them of course, we want to remind you about our podcast, The Upset Podcast, which is currently airing every Sunday at 6 p.m. Go ahead and subscribe to, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts. And so you can follow all of those shows that come up there. Just an opportunity to have fun and talk about some of the things going on in our world. If you're not getting our newsletter, and you should be, go to our website, visitaec.org slash news, and you can sign up to get the newsletter so you can see all the other wonderful things happening at the conference or throughout the conference. Thanks once again for tuning in. After all, the more you watch, the more you know. We'll see you next week, everyone. Have a great weekend. To get out of the Martha syndrome, we need to adopt a Mary solution. That's right, a Mary solution. Taking time to sit at the feet of Jesus or simply to develop a life in which we can find time to be with him, talk to him, learn from him and love him. A time to be still, he said, and know that I am God. Let him pour into your spirit the joy, the self-control, the gentleness, the laughter, the balance. When you're sitting at the feet of Jesus, you're relaxed, you're chill. The anxiety and the nervous energy you feel will disappear. The need to be busy will dissipate. And you will learn in that moment that everything is not urgent. We always find time for those we love. If we don't, those relationships suffer. Our relationship with God is no different. Jesus bids us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light.